Now we're going to mess with your mind. <laughs> Scramble your senses. And baffle your brain. In, In Mind Benders. For today's mind bending trick, we're going to perform an optical illusion. Dun dun dun! What are you doing? I'm going to perform an illusion. Son, it's not a magic trick, it's science, it's an optical illusion. Can I keep wearing my cape? No, go and get changed. Our optical illusion is going to show how your brain processes visual information. Here we've got a lovely batch of fresh cupcakes, but which of the two middle cakes is bigger? First up is Grace. This cake is worth a pound. How much would you pay for that cake? One pound thirty. You think a pound thirty, so you think it's about 30% bigger. The bigger it is, the more it should cost, because it's more yummy. More yumminess. More yumminess. You pay for the yumminess. So you're sure that that cake is about a third bigger than that cake on the left? Yeah. Okay. So, if this yummy cake is a pound, how much would people pay for this even yummier cake? I would pay a pound fifty. You pay a pound fifty. Probably about mm, one pound seventy-five. Do you think that one is 75p bigger than that one? Yeah. One pound fifty. Two pounds. Two pounds? Right. I'd really? say two pounds as well. It's taller. It's I think wider. It looks taller. No, it definitely looks bigger and fatter. Well, if you said you'd pay more for the bigger cake on the left, you'd be out of pocket, because believe it or not, they're the same size. Gracie, what would you say if I told you those two cakes are exactly the same size? You're mad. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> no, no. You still think that one's bigger? Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, really weird. I don't get it. So why do you think that one looks bigger? Is it because of the size of the cakes around it? They're tiny. Yeah. Those ones are massive. Yep. They've got it. This trick is known as the Ebbing House illusion. It demonstrates that our brain doesn't see the size of things as they really are, but rather as they appear compared to what's around them. Both cakes are exactly the same size, but the one on the left appears larger because it's surrounded by smaller cakes. Right, son, let's take the tray further down the street and see if we can find some more volunteers for our experiment. Wait a minute. The middle cakes have gone. Mm. Now we're going to mess with your mind. <laughs> Scramble your senses. You're so <laughs> and baffle your brain in mind benders. So today's mind bending trick is all about concentration, isn't it, Zand? Zand? What are you doing? I'm concentrating. <laughs> well, that's not how the trick works. <laughs> You're not fooling me. These children at this school think they're here to play a simple game. But we've got a trick up our sleeve. So what we're going to show you is a video of a ball game. And all you have to do is count the number of passes that the team in white make. Really good. Let's roll the video. Time to get counting. So, how many passes do you think the team in white made? OK. Joshua. 21. 21. Charles? 21. 21. 22. The correct answer is 21. But did you spot anything weird? Did you see anything at all other than the passing? Just saw the passing. Just saw the passing. What we didn't tell you was before the match, Zahn dressed up as a gorilla and made an amazing ape appearance during the game. Let's see if anyone spots it this time. Nope, no one seems to have noticed. In fact, it took three attempts and then finally... Um, I saw a gorilla. A gorilla? Who thinks Cecilia's crazy? There was no gorilla, was there? So just watch it again. Don't worry about the passes now. Just see if you can see a gorilla. There is... Wait a minute. There is the gorilla at the back dancing. Oh, the, oh that gorilla. <laughs> oh, that guy's moving back! <laughs> and we fooled the other groups, too. Oh, there is that gorilla. <laughs> yes, the 
Oh, that gorilla. So why didn't they spot it? Oh, it's because you're looking at them passing the ball, but you don't notice that the gorilla's walking past. Cecilia is right. You're so busy concentrating on the passes that you don't notice the gorilla in the room. This is called inattentional blindness, the failure to notice something important because your attention is engaged elsewhere. So, always keep your eye out for the unexpected. Well done. I mean, you really got stuck into your part as a gorilla. Well, you know, Chris, whenever I'm asked to take on a part, I try and really get into it. At one point, I was going to interview a gorilla Tom. and ask them about their motivation. Tom. You've left your gorilla feet on. <laughs> now we're going to mess with your mind, scramble your senses, and baffle your brain in Mind Benders. Today's mind bending trick is all about distraction. If you're sufficiently distracted, you might not notice something that's going on right in front of your eyes. That's not how it works, aunt. Who said that? Today, the children at this school think they're here to learn about bones, but we've got a trick up our sleeve. See if you can spot it. I want you to count all the bones that you can see in this picture. Go. And the first team get right on it, before we've even had time to arrange the scenery. And stop. OK, how'd you do? I went to 49. You got 49, Mohammed? 52. 52. 47. 47. Um, 48. 48. Well, they were all pretty close, but did anyone notice something strange? Let's have another look. Right there, Zand was replaced by a fake Zand, and nobody noticed. How far can we push this? We give the group another task. Starting now. Count all the bones in that picture. And at the same time, swap fake Zand with Mr. Hoskins, their teacher. Somebody they should definitely recognise. OK, look at me. Answers? 33. But amazingly, still nobody notices. I now want you to count the back bones. Go. Now we get extreme. I'm going to swap places with Chris. There's that scenery coming through again. And right there, Sand and I swap over. And time's up. OK. Now, when you were counting, did you notice anything else? Maybe not on the board. <gasps> ah, finally they've spotted it. Oh, hey. Mr Hoskins. And all our groups fell for it. Oh. <laughs> you guys. You are, you are, you are him. <laughs> I didn't notice anyone. You didn't notice at all? No. <laughs> Have you ever seen this man before? No. Really, because he was standing right in front of you a few minutes ago. Dr. <gasps> Chris? That worked pretty well. I also got confused. <laughs> Why do you think it worked? How are we able to fool you so easily? Well, we were so focused. Like, we didn't... We weren't aware of what's happening around us. Iman's exactly right. When your brain's concentrating on one thing really hard, it tunes out everything else that's going on around you, even so that you'll miss something quite important that's happening right in front of your eyes. Stop that! <laughs> now we're going to mess with your mind. It's weird. Scramble your senses and baffle your brain. In Mind Benders. This is Anywheresville, UK, and two ordinary workmen are going about their business fixing the pavement. It's us. Today, we're testing the theory that people will do pretty much anything that someone in authority tells them to do. And it works even better if you're wearing a uniform, which is why we're dressed like this. We've got a fake building site and loads of hidden cameras. I've got a hidden camera in my glasses. I've got a hidden camera in my clip. And that lady over there has got a hidden camera in that black bag. Right, Zan, let's get back to work. Will people really do as they're told, no matter how silly? If you guys are going to come through, can you turn sideways? Yeah, like this. And then when you walk through, just go like that. Just like that, OK? Just walk sideways like I am. Just like that. Just sideways like that, just because of the wet cement. Just go sideways. Thank you very much. Stay looking. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you. Just go sideways like that. Thank you. 
That's perfect. Once you're through, that's great. Walk sideways and look at the concrete. You are doing such a good job. Great, and now walk backwards. That's ideal. <laughs> Sir, if you're going to come through here, can you just go sideways? Just go sideways like that. Thanks very much. There you're good now. So what reason did people have for doing exactly what we told them? They looked like they were builders, so we trusted them and did what they said. If someone was dressed normally, I wouldn't have listened to them, but if you're dressed like in a state of authority, yeah, I would listen. I walked sideways like they asked, and I thought, oh, I look a bit silly doing that. <laughs> yeah, I guess then it just no. be nice, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. We obviously thought, because he was a, a man in uniform, we thought we was obliged to follow his orders. I just thought it was a bit weird, but I did it anyway. <laughs> yeah. When people are asked to do something by a stranger, even if it's something they don't want to do, they'll often do it anyway, either out of fear of getting into trouble or because they want to please the stranger. Right, Chris, should we get packed up and go? Yeah, of course, let's go. Oh, hold on, son. As you go past the concrete, I want you to turn backwards and then hop on one leg. If you say so. Now we're going to mess with your mind. It's weird. Scramble your senses and baffle your brain. In Mind Benders. Today's mind-bending trick is one for your eyes, but to do it, Zander and I need to change colour. <laughs> I don't remember saying you could do this. You know I only ever wear green. All right, son, calm down. It won't last forever. Three groups of children at this school are here to play one of our mind-bending tricks. We're going to show you this picture. I'm going to make you look at it very hard. And then we're going to switch it to a black and white picture. Are there any colours in this picture? No. In order for it to work, you have to keep looking at that dot. And even when the picture changes and you'll want to look at the rest of the picture, you still have to keep looking at the dot. Does that make sense? Yeah. You can play at home too. Are you ready? Just remember, keep your eyes fixed on the dot in the middle of the picture. And don't move your eyes when the picture changes. Keep focused on that dot. Keep looking. Ready for the change? Don't move your eyes. Do you see this photo in colour? Now move your eyes. Do you see it's actually in black and white? Whoa! Yeah! <laughs> How did this lot get on? I saw blue. They saw blue and green. You saw us in colour, basically, yeah. And all the groups saw it. So just to be clear, guys, at no stage is that black and white picture ever coloured. There's no colour. It just goes from weird orange to black and white. So why do you think we had to show you weird colours? Because they were negative, like... What do you mean by negative? Like, the opposite colour. Omar's got the right idea. First, we showed the negative image, which has the opposite colours of all those in the original. As you can see, on the colour wheel, the opposite to blue and green is orange and red, so our blue and green tops have become orangey-red. So why do we then see colour on the black and white picture when there is none? At the back of your eyes, you have cells called photoreceptors, and they detect light. And you have different photoreceptors for different colours. But when you've been looking at one colour for a long time, the photoreceptors that deal with that colour get tired and switch off a bit. So when you're looking at our image, the photoreceptors in the back of your eye that deal with orange and red get tired and they take a little break. When it flips to black and white, your brain isn't getting signals from the orange and red ones anymore. So your blue and green receptors step in to provide the missing colour. Chris, I'm glad you put me back to my normal colour, but wait a minute! You've done it again! I mean, what is this? You know I can't stand wearing blue. I'm going to go and get my bottle of green clothes dye and I'm going to fix this once and for all. Honestly, it's just an absolute disgrace. Now we're going to mess with your mind, Weird. scramble your senses and baffle your brain in, in Mind Benders. Uh, now, Zard, are you hungry? Have you eaten lunch? I have eaten lunch, Chris, but there is always room for a little something more. Well, that is good, Zard, because I have a small treat for you. A treat? Well, what is it? This. A single butter bean. How is that a treat? Well, you said you only had room for something small. And anyway, this is a magic bean. A magic bean? <laughs> uh, yeah, da, da, da. In order to get this bean, Zard, you have to take part in today's mind-bending experiment. 
This is a very simple game. There are three beans, one on each cup. When I say so, you are going to put those three beans into the other cup, OK? Ready? Three, two, one, go. Yes! So that took you four and a half seconds. OK. All right. okay. Now, I want you to put on the glasses that you can see on the table. Now, do these look like normal glasses? No. No, they look a bit weird, don't they? These vision-shifting glasses make everything appear further to the left than it actually is. So let's try with my funky new specs. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Come on, Dr. Zand. Come on. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Come on! Hurry, Zand. Hurry, Zand. And... Get it, get it, get it. Oh, that was... Did I do well? Ten seconds. Ten seconds. We repeat the experiment twice more. Come on, Zandy. And I complete it faster each time. Oh, four and a half seconds. He's now as quick with the glasses as he was without the glasses. Now let's try it again without the glasses. Go. Come on, Zan. So everything should be back to normal, right? Wrong! Oh, Zan, you're rubbish at this. What did I get? That took you seven seconds. So Zand was actually worse at the end without the glasses. Let's see how this lot get on. OK, they're nice and tight. Give me a high five. <laughs> go! Come on, Skyler, let's go! Just like Zand, our volunteers have trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but get faster after a few goes. Getting better, 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 better. Oh, oh look yes. at that. With awesome. the glasses off... Go! How will they do now? The class are still struggling. You were slower without the glasses. Who thinks they understand now what's happening? I think that the brain is trying to get used to a different way of looking at things. But if you take the glasses off, then it's kind of like you try and get in focus. Naomi is almost right. These glasses shift everything in Zan's visual world a little bit to the left, and that means when he puts them on, his brain has to rewire itself so that this new world appears normal. But then, when he takes them off, he has to re-rewire his brain in order that his normal visual world appears normal once again. So this shows how quickly your brain adapts to changes around you. I must say, Chris, after that, I feel absolutely full of beans. I mean, it's been amazing. Zand, I think that's enough with the bean puns. I mean, you could almost say, when you explained it to everyone there at the end, that you had to, uh, spill the beans. Ouch. Now we're going to mess with your mind. It's weird. Scramble your senses and baffle your brain. Ooh. In Mindbenders. What are you doing? For today's mind-bending trick, Zand is going to need warm facial muscles. Are you ready, Zand? It's quite a complicated vocal procedure. Well, the more complicated, the better for me. Now, can you say the word far? Far. Can you say the word bar? Bar. I think you're ready. Didn't seem that complicated. This lot are about to get their minds bent. We're showing them a video of Zand repeating a word. Bar. Bar. OK, what sound is Dr. Zand making? Bar. Sheep. Bar. Like a sheep, right? Like a sheep. OK, yeah. All right, let's watch the next video. Far, 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 far. Now, what sound is Dr. Zand making bar. in that video? Does anyone think he's still saying bar? No. No, he's definitely saying far. Are you ready to play at home? OK, everyone look at the left. Look at this one. Bar. Whilst looking at the left hand, Zand, bar. what word can you hear? Bar, bar, bar. 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 OK, now, who's hearing far? You're all hearing far. OK, now, everyone, look at the right. Bar. Looking at the right hand, on, what bar. word can you hear now? Bar. 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 Now, who thinks it's bar? Bar. bar? What if we told you that only one word was being said? Bar. In bar. reality, Zand bar. is only ever saying the word bar. 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 The Zand on the left is miming the word far. Bar. So, depending on which Zand you look at, you hear different words. <laughs> Even though the only word he's saying is bar. I get it. <laughs> Have we bent your mind? <laughs> yes. So what do you think is going on? Sammy? Is it because when your brain looks at one of them, it, like, maybe changes it? Sammy's nailed there. That's yeah. really good. So you're lip-reading, basically. So even when you're hearing a sound, 
you trust your eyes more than your ears. What this trick demonstrates is the dominance of vision over all your other senses. So even though the sound you're hearing the whole time is bar, when your eyes see Zahn's mouth make the shake bar, that's what you hear. But the sound hasn't changed at all. And what's amazing about this is, it's a video of me, and I know what sound I was making, and I'm still fooled. Mind fent. I think you mean bent. That's what I said. Now we're going to mess with your mind. Swiss. Scramble your senses. And baffle your brain. In, In mind benders. Can I have a sweet? Oh, no. You've got loads there. Surely you can spare me one? Ordinarily, Chris, I'd love to, but these have got to last me all the way to lunchtime. Till lunchtime? But you're never going to eat all those before lunchtime. Go on, give me one. All right, I tell you what, you can have one. Brilliant. Ah, da, 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 da. You can have one if you can grab it before me. Now, I'm going to give you a head start. Put your hand there. Your hand's closer than mine, and all you have to do is grab it when I say go. Looks like I'm going to get my sweet after all. Three, two, one, go. That is an amazing trick. Do you think I could do it? Oh, I think so. It is an amazing trick, isn't it? Great. I'm going to go and try it myself. All right, good luck. Wait a minute. He only needs one sweet to do the trick. What am I going to eat until lunch? I've headed to a town centre to see how many sweets I can win. Time to see if I'm as good at this as Dr Zahn and Benson Mines. Now, do you reckon you can get the sweet before me if we both go on go? Definitely. You sure of that? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> go. How do you this. do that? <laughs> go. Ah. What am I going to do with all my sweets? I keep winning every time. Go. Oh, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> go. <laughs> miles away. How did you get that? Go. Oh, miles away. Go. Oh, it's miles no, away. No, no. Go. Catherine, what are you doing? Are you feeling all right? Yeah. Now, although all these people had quick reaction times, they're not going to beat me. And that's because there is a slight delay in the word go, leaving my mouth, getting into their ears, being processed in their brain, and then their hand moving. Whereas in my brain, because I've said it, my hand starts to move immediately without any delay, no matter how small. Well, that's my mind bent. Is yours? Now we're going to mess with your mind, scramble your senses, and baffle your brain in Mind Benders. Good morning. What do you mean, good morning? You're late. It's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. I see where this is going. Yes, Aunt, it's nice to meet you. I didn't just bring my fake hands to fool Chris. We're going to be using them for today's mind-bending trick. So can you put your hand right there, neck, as if as if that was your other hand, basically? Yeah. And then stick your other hand under the cloth. Yeah, that's perfect, so it's next to that hand. Today's trick is going to show how what you see affects how you feel. We're stroking the person's real hand behind the screen at the same time as stroking the fake hand which is in front of them. Is that plastic hand beginning to feel like your hand? Yeah? Keep looking at it. It actually feels like that's my hand. It doesn't look real, but it feels real. Are you feeling like I'm brushing your hands? Yeah. Really? Yeah, that feels exactly. like you're brushing my hand. It's really strange, yeah. I feel like it's my hand. Now we've got the illusion going, it's time to see how they react with a fake spider on the fake hand. Oh! That worked really nicely. <laughs> I felt like it was actually my real hand. Oh! <laughs> did you feel like the spider was on your hand? Yeah, I think I did. But it worked, because my hand was there, so why would I feel it on there? It's a really weird sensation. <laughs> did you think you had a spider on your hand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You stay focused on that hand. <laughs> so, we managed to trick plenty of people, but how does it work? So there's a bit of your brain called the premotor cortex, and that brings together 
your senses of touch, of position, and of vision, so that your body can figure out what's happening in the world around it. And what's so interesting about this experiment is that your sense of vision is the most important sense. And so your brain actually temporarily rewires itself to adopt the plastic hand as your own. Amazing. Well, Chris, fooling all those people has tired me out. Give us a hand. Son, I'm not falling for the old fake hand trick again. 